This was billed both by um, Obama's inner circle, but also the American media as his biggest speech since he left the White House. Did it live up to that billing in your view? It was undoubtedly uh, his biggest speech since leaving the White House. You'd remember that since he left office, Donald Trump has been on him, blaming him for everything under the sun. And Donald Trump has uh, consistently reversed all his achievements as president. And many people were asking, when is Barack Obama going to speak out? And it is interesting that he chose South Africa and he chose the Nelson Mandela lecture to talk about that. But talking about the issues that he was raising, it speaks again to the reversal of his legacy. Uh, Barack Obama was a globalist and he believed in the Western Alliance that uh, America must work together with NATO, must work with, together with the EU. But if you look at um, um, uh, you know, Russia under um, uh, Vladimir Putin, it is against globalization because they fear that these democracies that are springing around Europe, they are beginning to affect the countries that, that were in the Eastern Bloc. Vladimir yeah. Putin doesn't want that. And also the people that uh, um, Donald Trump spends time with, the likes of, um, you know, <clears throat> uh, Breitbart, uh, the, the guy from Breitbart, who believe that uh, global, globalization is not where we should be going. Where we should be going is that it, each individual country must have Protectionism their own of sorts. Of, of sorts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of reflecting on the legacy of Nelson Mandela, though, um, to what extent was, was the message detracted from by him uh, sort of giving those subtle jabs at Donald Trump on immigration, on climate change, and also when he talked about people lie, people make stuff up. Did that detract in any way? It did not detract from that, but I think what he did, he cleverly inserted himself into Nelson Mandela's agenda, and he owned Nelson Mandela. and that he chose the Nelson Mandela lecture. It was really saying to Americans, if you, um, you know, revere Nelson Mandela, I'm Nelson Mandela's man, and this is what I'm saying. So he didn't mention Donald Trump's name, otherwise that would have been protected. So you cannot argue that what he was saying was anathema, was contrary to what uh, Nelson Mandela would have stood for. I'm sure you will have seen the debate around whether or not, you know, uh, former President Obama has the moral uh, standing to even deliver this lecture of a man who stood for freedom and justice and, you know, promoted peace, uh, whereas some have actually gone as far as to say uh, former President Obama is a warmonger who waged war not only in Libya but also intensified the drone wars. What do you say to that debate? I, I think uh, the South African government and the Nelson Mandela Foundation understand that global politics and American politics are more nuanced than that. In America, um, the presidency is an institution, it's not an individual. So you cannot, as an American president, decide that there's not going to be any war. You can decide how you do things, you don't decide the what. And I think South African authorities understand that. But you must also remember that uh, Barack Obama met with President uh, Mandela when he was alive, and also, you know, he delivered this moving eulogy uh, at his funeral. So he's not someone really that is seen by Africans as typical of an American president. But it would really be naive to think that Barack Obama, lacking political capital as he did as a black president and a Democrat, that he could have done differently. All right, very quickly. Um, you, you covered uh, the late former president, Nelson Mandela, extensively. Yes. I remember. And I'm wearing see, one of his shirts. See, I can see that. I can see that, <laughs> that you chose the outfit, uh, you know, strategically. What is the one lasting impression for you, uh, one lasting memory. One of the things I, re I seem to recall from journalists who worked at that time was that he knew all of you and knew your names and knew about your families and, and what issues you were facing at various points. Nelson Mandela was a genius when it comes to public relations. He knew how to position himself, he knew how to brand himself politically, and he knew how to make himself likable. And unfortunately, I may say, um, I think a lot of my colleagues in the media fell for that because he was charming and it became very difficult to criticize him and to hold him to account. And I do hope that going forward we're not going to fall into the same trap where you have a popular president and the media are somehow reluctant to criticize that president. Because if we do that, then and, and Barack Obama spoke about this yesterday, that where you have charismatic leaders, you know, when they do wrong things, now it becomes difficult to hold them to account. So I think the media and the journalists in particular, they must hold power to account whether people are popular or not. Within the case of Nelson Mandela, we did have a fantastic president who was a, a man of high moral authority. Right.